Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to continue showing you how to perform queries inside of MySQL. And definitely, if you haven't seen the other tutorials, check those out. What I'm going to do here is I actually have a database that is by no means optimized, but it is absolutely full of strange data and information. So I'm going to query a lot of the information in it just because it is absolutely full of information. It's over, I don't know, tens of thousands of records. Okay, so what I did here is I'm showing you all the tables inside of this database called HamDB. And let's say that I want to specifically see some more information on this manufacturer ID record we have here. And you can see here it's made up of a primary key and then information specifically on manufacturers. Now, I'm just going to scroll up here. Let's say you wanted to see everything available. You would use the select command followed by a star, which can represent everything. And if we just type that in, it's going to show us everything that is currently in the record called manufacturer ID. And you can see there's 284 rows, there's a lot of information, and it is not alphabetized. It's just sort of thrown in there. Like I said, it's not an optimized, perfect little table. Let's say I just want to pull in the information stored in the column titled Manufacturer. If we scroll up here, see at the very top, this is the column called Manufacturer. And if I just wanted to pull information from it specifically, I would type in Select Manufacturer from Manufacturer ID, which is the name of the table. So this right here is the column. And this right here is the record name. If I click on that, it's just going to show you the manufacturer's names. Like I said before, this isn't alphabetized. It's very easy to alphabetize it. I'm just typing in exactly the same thing that I typed in before. However, I'm going to type in order by manufacturer, which is the name of the column. And I, that's all I did. Order by manufacturer. Enter, and now you can see that this information is alphabetized. And if I'd want to put this information in descending order or reverse alphabetical order, just put in order by again, manufacturer, descending. Boom. And you can see here that now all that information shot out here on the screen in descending order. And if I wanted to specifically, I'm going to show you here again, I'm going to do for the rest of this tutorial, everything that is an actual SQL command is going to be uppercase letters so that you'll be able to differentiate from those things that are commands and those things that are columns or tables. So where, and here I'm going to put a stipulation in that man ID is equal to 5. And if I put that stipulation, you can see the man ID comes up here as 5, manufacturer, and then the manufacturer associated with that ID. All brought up here, and you have to understand these basics to be able to do even more complicated things with SQL. But it's really simple. I mean, you're basically saying you, you want specific information in a very logical way, and it is providing it to you. Where man ID is between 5 and and what this is going to do is it's going to show me all the information in regards to the manufacturer's name and the manufacturer's ID if the manufacturer's ID lies between the number 5 and 10. Just like that, and you can see that it pulled up exactly what you would think that it would pull up. Of course, you could change any of these other different things that are available here to you. And I'm just going to copy this, paste it down here, and again, I'm going to search for anything in which the man ID is equal to 2, or here's another command man ID is equal to 10. And you could continue doing these or statements over and over and over and over again. And you can see it brought up the manufacturer associated with the identification number 2 as well as 10. So that's just a way that you can combine multiple different commands inside of SQL. And of course, if we come in here, we could also say manufacturer ID is greater than or equal to 280. And it's going to show all those manufacturer's IDs that meet those restrictions. And I could also say manufacturer's ID that are greater than or equal to 100. And manufacturer's ID that are less than or equal to 110. And you can see that's another way to pull up all those manufacturer's IDs and manufacturer names that are associated between the numbers 100 and 110. You can also perform different searches. Again, I'm just keep putting down the same information here over and over again based off of whether the data is like, and like is another way to search. So let's say that I want to look for any manufacturer names that are like, Again, like is another term. Data, 
And then whenever we put in this percent sign, what we're saying is we want returned all the manufacturers that begin with the letters D-A-T-A -A and any number of other letters thereafter. That's what the percent sign stands for in this situation. And you can see that it did just that. It brought back everyone that equaled data followed by anything else. Remember, that's what the percent sign's there for. And you could also represent individual characters with an underscore inside of the like command, just like that. So let's say that I wanted to return this same information here, except I only want to return data followed by five individual characters. How would I do that? It's actually quite simple. Come in here, I'm going to copy this, scroll up, paste it down, and then I could say like, and then come in here and put one, two, three, four, five underscores inside of there. And you could see it's only going to return information if it starts off with data followed by five letters. So there's another different way. And I could also come in here and go select for manufacturer ID, which again, remember, is the table. And this manufacturer is the column. If the information is one of the following, you're we're using the in command, but you could say if it is either Alden or add master. Okay, so it's going to return anything if that value equals Alden or add master. And you could put multiple other different things in here as well. And you could see that it returned add master and Alden. And I could also come in here. I'm going to again do this. Actually, I'm going to scroll up, paste this in here, and show you another way to use the like. You don't have to just put the percent sign at the end. You could also put it at the very beginning. And since this database contains a lot of technology company, it's common for technology companies to end with the letter N-I-C-S. So let's put that in there. And what this is going to do is going to return all manufacturers' names that end with N-I-C-S. And you can see that it just did that for me. So there's another way to work with them. Now I'm going to work with another totally different table inside of this database called model numbers. And here it is. It's a lot more complicated than you saw previously. And show you another thing you can do here. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to play around with the model numbers and I'm going to perform regular expression tests on those model numbers. So here's the model number. It's a series of characters 30 in length. So let's scroll up so it'll be easier for you to see it. So I'm going to say I want to select descriptions from the table called model numbers where the description, and if you haven't seen my regular expression tutorial, you should definitely check that out. Otherwise, this might not make sense to you. What I'm doing here is I'm going to select from the column name description and the table called model numbers where the description is going to match this regular expression that I'm going to define. And what I'm going to say here is what I'm looking for is going to start off with the caret symbol. The caret symbol represents the beginning of the string of information. And then it's going to be followed by any number of series of characters. And then it's going to be preceded by that by either 8.5 or 11. Close that bracket off. And it's going to match again for any one or more of any of those characters that I have right here, either 8.5 or 11. It's then going to be followed by any number of characters, and then it's going to be followed by U-N-I-V-R-S-A-L. Don't know why they used that abbreviation of just one letter, but they did. And you can see that it brought that information back to me. And if I scroll up here again to explain this, the caret represents the beginning of the string. Okay, so that would be this space right here before the B, before all these Bs. This represents any number of characters. This represents a character. This represents any number of characters. So this, in essence, says any number of characters. Whenever you put brackets around something, like I did right here, what it's saying is I'm looking for the string to then have 8.5 or the number 11 to be followed. And you can see it fits those constraints every single time. And by putting this plus sign in here, we're saying that we expect to match for one or more of any of the characters that precede it, which would be these guys. Then we are going to be followed by any number of characters, just like I explained here. And then we're going to be followed by this very specific string. And you can see there is that very specific string. And then this guy's going to end. All right, now if I scroll this up, I'm going to give you a couple other examples here. So again, select from the row called description from the table called model numbers, where description, the column, and then we want to do a regular expression test here. And this time we're going to look 
specifically for a string that begins with between. Again, there's the period. It represents any single character except for new line, actually. And we expect to have one, two, three. Whenever you use these curly braces right here, what we're saying here is we expect that there's one to three characters are going to start off the string, and then those one to three characters are going to be preceded by an eight, meaning two potential eights. Again, that's what you're doing there with the curly braces. If you only put one in, it's going to look specifically for 88 is what this right here is looking for. I could type in 88, but what have you, I'm trying to explain this. Then any number of characters, and then by putting a dollar sign here, we're saying that we expect this string that we're looking for to end. Dollar sign, just like the caret, represents the beginning of the string. The dollar sign represents the end of the string. And if we hit enter, you can see that it brought back that information right there. Remember, we were looking for one to three characters, followed by two eights, followed by any number of other different characters, followed by nothing being the end of the line. Let's say I copy that in there. And let's say that I want the word description to show up in the results instead of what we had before. If you want a different word to show up than the actual name of the column, what you need to do is come in here and after the column name, what it's really named in the table, you want to put in the command as and then type in what you want it to be called. So if I want the word description to actually show up instead of the abbreviated descript, in the output that comes out on the screen, well, I would just do this. And if we scroll up, you can see now description is in there instead of descript. This is called an alias, and this is another little trick you could perform with commands inside of MySQL, and these are specifically SQL commands. If you're not quite getting it, don't worry. After a gazillion tutorials, you will totally get it. And just a review. All right, so if we have our regular expressions we're defining, star is going to represent zero or more. And in this situation, if we put a dot, which represents any single character, this is going to match zero or more of whatever precedes it, which is the symbol any single character. So this, in essence, means match for any single character. If we put a plus sign behind it, that means one or more of any single character. And if we put a question mark after this, that's going to match for zero or one of anything that precedes it. Again, you're probably better off watching my regular expression tutorial if you're confused by this at all. And for further review, if you wanted to match for the result of 8.5 or 11, you would put that little pipe in there and that would do just that. And if you wanted to match for the number 88, you could either put 88 in there or you could put 8 followed by 2 inside of these curly braces. If you wanted to match for 2 or more 8s, you would just put the 2 being the minimum and then nothing. Or if you wanted to match or 2 to 4 8s, you would do just that right there inside of your regular expression. Or if you wanted to match up to a maximum number of 8, this would actually match for the number eight, the whole way up to 8,888. And now I'm actually gonna come in here, show you another table. Let's look at the manufacturer identification table that we have inside of this database. It's a little bit more simplistic. And again, if you wanna see everything from this table right here, you see all the different results. Now let's say, I'm gonna do another regular expression example. So let's say I wanna select everything from the column name manufacturer from the table called manufacturer ID where the manufacturer column fits this regular expression, which is going to be that this match is going to start and then is not, this is one other regular expression I didn't teach you, if you put anything inside of brackets starting off with a caret, the caret stands for not when it's inside of brackets. So what this is specifically saying is I'm looking for a string of characters or a result that does not contain the letter A. So it's going to shoot out regular expressions and the star is going to say one or more characters that are not the letter A. And then we're going to say end of string, put your quote in there, hit enter. And you can look at the results here and you can see that none of these results contain the character A. So that is specifically how you would do that little guy right there. And just to copy this guy right here and print him back out here on the screen. Let's say that I wanted to get results that did not contain the letters A or E. You just do just that. And you can see that the list is longer because now we're restricting the manufacturer's names from the letters A or E. And now I'm going to actually come in here and say that I don't want any of these manufacturers to have an A, E, or an I inside of them. Put 
my star symbol in there, and that, bring this in here, and just to make sure that you get it, order by manufacturer, right like that, and you can see that none of these contain A, E's, or I's. And let's say also that you would only want, as the final example here, the first five of these to show up. That's easy enough. Come in here, E, I, close that off. What you do is just type in limit five right at the end there. And it's only gonna show you the first five results. And then let's say that we want to limit our results. Let's just say we're looking for results that don't contain the letter A. And we wanna limit to just the fifth result through the tenth result, just like that. And you can see that it did just that. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to use MySQL statements inside of MySQL. And again, we're gonna be using these in PHP. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.